Mick DSP have been one of the industry leaders in plug-in design, but the brand's most recent release actually includes true blue analog processing. That's right, my friends. Today we're going to be talking about the newest APB16. So after being announced at NAMM 2019, the APB16 garnered a boatload of buzz and had engineers salivating. Now what makes this unit so unique is that the processing is actually happening inside the unit itself. That's how you're getting all that analog goodness. And when you change the settings of the plugin within your DAW, it sends a CV signal to the analog circuit within the APB16 rack unit and tells it how to behave. Thus, digital control over analog sound. Now the APB16 supports up to 16 mono channels and 8 stereo channels, but if you need more, they can easily be chained together. Similar to other digital plug-in processors, the box easily integrates with your audio interface via Thunderbolt. Then a simple software download and boom, you're up and running. This was a piece of cake to get going. From there, you get access to six incredible compressor and limiter plugins. When it comes to the sound of the APB16 plugins, MCDSP's engineers were definitely focused on amplitude. The C18 and L18 offer clean compression and limiting options. The LMU and MU Tube are another compressor and limiter combo that are essentially MCDSP's take on the Veramu. And lastly, the C673A and Chickenhead are more aggressive compressors to add crush to your drum overheads or just some more obvious color to your sources. So today we're just going to put together a really simple track through our Universal Audio Apollo interface and then process all of our sources through the APB16. We'll have a listen to each source, both before and after, talk about how we processed everything, and then listen to the final mix at the end. All right, so we just finished recording Jake Lamond, and now I'm going to run you through the tracking and mixing process using the APB16. So everything in this song was recorded through an Apollo rack mount interface with no EQ or compression. The first thing that we did was the acoustic guitar that was recorded with the Royer R121 microphone. So then in the mixing process, I added a little bit of EQ just to add some top end, carve out a little bit of the low. And then through the APB16, I used the MooTube compressor. And with this, I'm hitting it pretty hard because he's finger picking very light throughout the song. And I wanted that to be up front in the mix. So I'm actually hitting roughly between four to six dB of compression throughout the entire song. This compressor had a really nice warm sound to it. So I thought it would be the perfect choice for this track. And that's also then running through a little bit of lexicon uh, reverb just to add some space around it. So let's hear how it sounds. So next we moved on to tracking the lead vocal, which was recorded with a Sony C100. And in the mixing process, I used a little bit of de to take away some syllabants. And then again, I'm using the MooTube compressor uh, pretty aggressively, getting up where to 10, possibly even like 12 dB of compression. Um, you don't notice how much compression this is doing. It's very, very subtle. Um, He's a soft singer, so I wanted him to just really be up front in the mix. Uh, so I have a medium attack set onto here, but a fast recovery. So he's constantly pushing forward into the mix. And then this is also adding uh, quite a bit of gain so he can be loud in the overall track. And then his vocal is running into a reverb and delay just to add some ambience. And let's hear how it sounds. As I was driving her home to a house last night, she said, keep on driving. I can't stand the sight of my daddy. He keeps me from dreaming, locked up inside. So next we moved on to drums, which we had three microphones on the kit. We had the Art 121 on the kick drum. We had the SM57 on the snare and a Coles 4038 as the overhead. So then getting into the mix, on the kick drum, I just use a transient designer to tighten up the sustain of the kick drum. I'm also using a sample on the kick and the snare just to add a little bit more contemporary sound to it and punch overall. Um, on the kick sample, this is where I, I started to use the MCDSP plugins. And on this source, especially in the drums, I was really reminded that I'm using analog gear, where the control from the plugin is so easy, but the sonics truly reminds me of being in 
the 45 factory or a high-end studio that I'm used to working in. And the L18 limiter is doing a great job of just keeping the kick sample one volume the entire time, just so it's not distracting, there's no peaks coming through. On the snare drum, I then go to the 618, which is hitting pretty aggressively. So there's a heavy backbeat in this song, and I really didn't want the drums to be distracting or dynamic, so hitting it pretty hard just to glue everything into place. On the snare sample, the same as the kick sample, I'm using the L18 limiter to keep everything glued together. And then this is the first time that I used uh, this chicken head compressor, which is hitting pretty hard, but on the second snare sample, this is to add ambience, and there's a little bit of natural room sound in it. And with this, I actually didn't want the transient to come through, but I wanted more sustain of the ambience of the sample. So this is aggressively attacking the attack and then letting the release slowly come up. On the overhead track, this is the first time that I'm using the C673A. And this reminds me a lot of how a Fairchild works on drums. So I'm hitting it pretty aggressively, again, because I don't want any distraction from the drums. And then I have the time constant set to five, which is seeming like it's in a medium attack and medium release. It's really letting the natural sound of the drums breathe. And then all of it is being bussed into a drum bus, which I then again have the chicken head compressor on, which in this instance isn't working as aggressively as before, but this is just to help glue all of the natural mics and the samples together. Next thing we added was the electric bass, which was plugged directly into the high Z input of the Apollo. Uh, as far as EQ goes, I just added a little bit of top end to get a little bit more of the fingers, and then I'm actually just boosting a little bit of 100 to get a little more sustain of the low end. Again, I'm using the MooTube compressor for its overall warmth that I liked on uh, the vocals and everything else. And for this, I'm using a slower attack because I want the attack of the fingers to actually come through, but I don't really want it to be as loud as the sustain of the bass. So it's gently compressing the attack. And then I have a fast recovery on this, which actually seems to be pretty slow. So it's gently coming back up to zero as the bass is sustaining. And this is also uh, helping to add a little bit of gain just to make the bass fuller in the track. Uh, let's hear how it sounds. So lastly, we added a couple harmonies and backing vocals just in the outro section of the song, just to add a little more life to it. And I wanted a chance to get to use the Elmu uh, tube limiter, which very much reminds me of a LA-2A optical compressor sort of vibe. Um, Jake is a soft singer, as I said earlier, so his harmonies being very soft didn't have that much gain. Uh, so I'm using this compressor to add quite a bit of gain to make them louder. Then also, it's gluing the attack of the first note that he's saying is louder than the end of the harmony. So it's helping reduce that and keep a nice even harmony for the ooh section that he's singing. And let's hear all this sound. So after everything was tracked, the final thing I did in the mixing process was put on the L18 limiter to the mix bus. And 
This is adding just a little bit of gain just to get it up to a normal radio volume. And it's also just gently compressing the peaks, mostly on the kick and snare samples, uh, just to help them glue into the overall track and ultimately not turn on the red lights. So I'll give you an example before and after the limiter. As I was driving along to her house last night She said, keep on driving I can't stand the sight of my daddy He keeps me from dreaming Locked up inside She said, take me somewhere I can finally dream I wanna see the stars I wanna make it seem like Life's worth living When you don't have nothing to hide Well, I Cause maybe I'm just looking for someone to replace my heart Just in case you're still looking around Know that I'll be there from the start Alright everyone, that's the APB-16 by McDSP. If you have any questions about the APB-16, any other products from McDSP, feel free to hit up your audio consultant or visit us at vintageking.com. See you next time.